Remember our main goal in these videos is to learn how to draw resonance structures. And the reason why that could be difficult is that there are some things that you might be tempted to do, but that are actually illegal. So we have to learn what are the legal or valid resonance structures and what are the illegal and invalid resonance structures. Obviously, these two structures that I drew here are totally legal and valid. What would I mean by something that's invalid or illegal? Well, remember that to get this resonance structure over here, I moved the lone pair into the pi bond, and then I kicked this pi bond off of this carbon. But what would have happened if I just tried to do this? What would have happened if I just moved the lone pair into the pi bond, but I didn't put any arrows on this carbon? What would you get then? Well, we could erase this lone pair and turn it into a pi bond. And since this oxygen is losing electrons, it would go from negative to a neutral charge. And since this carbon has electrons coming towards it, it would go from neutral to a negative charge. This oxygen is losing electrons, so it would go from negative to a neutral charge. And this carbon is gaining electrons, so it would go from neutral to a negative charge. Um, but however, I hope that when you look at this, you'll see that this is really illegal, invalid. You're not allowed to draw this. What's wrong with this picture? Well, the carbon here has more than an octet. It has more than eight electrons around it. Um, because it has two electrons from this bond, two electrons from this bond, two electrons from this bond, two electrons from this bond. Well, that's eight electrons already. And then there's another two electrons in this sigma bond to the methyl group over here. Or another way to put that is this carbon has five bonds. Well, we know a carbon never can have five bonds. That would give it ten electrons. You're not allowed to have more than eight electrons if you're a carbon. So this would be an illegal and invalid resonance structure. So something I wanted to point out at this point is that obviously when you're drawing resonance structures, it's important to learn what's legal and what's illegal and to avoid drawing illegal or invalid resonance structures. So let me cross this out. Remember that what I was just showing an example of here is something that you should not do. This would be a wrong, illegal way to move the electrons because uh, we'd end up breaking the octet rule. The other main thing that you're not allowed to do, the other main thing that's illegal, is breaking a sigma bond. Uh, I hope you're familiar with the idea that single bonds are sigma bonds. Single bonds are sigma bonds. Um, and a double bond has a sigma bond and a pi bond. That's a concept that you should have gone over in general chemistry and early in organic chemistry. So if you just have a single bond, that's a sigma bond. Well, the rule is that you're not allowed to break that when you're drawing resonance structures. So if I start drawing an arrow like this, I already know that I've gone astray. This can't possibly work out because I'm breaking this sigma bond. I'm taking the electrons out of the sigma bond. That's also illegal when you're drawing resonance structures. So two of the big illegal things in resonance structures that you're not allowed to do, you're not allowed to have more than an octet of electrons, and you're not allowed to break a sigma bond. Now, there's some other things that you're not allowed to do that are also illegal, but those are the most important that I wanted to mention right now. What is the purpose of drawing resonance structures? Well, there's maybe more than one purpose, but I really want to focus on one in particular. The major purpose of drawing resonance structures is to identify where the charges are in the molecule. The purpose of drawing resonance structures is to identify where the charges are in the molecule. For example, if you only drew this resonance structure, you would think that the only charge is on this oxygen you would think that there's a full negative charge on this oxygen. But after you've drawn the resonance, you actually know that there's also negative charge on this oxygen. And you know that there's less negative charge on this oxygen than you might have thought. Actually, this oxygen has less than a full formal charge um, because there's another resonance structure where the charge isn't on this oxygen over here. So we can already see how resonance structures help us to see how the charge is distributed through the molecule. The purpose of drawing resonance structures, or at least one of the very major purposes, is to learn where the charges are in the molecule. I wanted to emphasize that because one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're drawing resonance structures is oftentimes they'll draw everything correct, but they'll forget to put the right charges in. Um, so they'll draw a, a resonance structure that's otherwise correct, but they won't get the charges right. Um, and um, then they'll say to themselves, well, I did pretty good. I got everything right but the charges. 
Um, but that doesn't make any sense. Remember the whole reason that we're drawing the resonance structure is to get the charges right. So if you get everything right except the charges, you might as well not have bothered in the first place. There's no point drawing a resonance structure unless you're going to get all the charges right. That's the reason we're drawing the resonance structure in the first place. So one thing that we're going to try to develop the habit of doing in this, in this videos from the very beginning is we are always going to be very much focused on getting the charges right. A lot of people kind of treat the charges as an afterthought that they maybe think about after they've done the rest of the resonance structure. But the charges are not an afterthought, they're the main thought. The charges are the reason that we're drawing the resonance structure in the first place.